Do you have slow internet or just an older computer and you want to stream anyway? If so, this might be the video for you. What is going on guys, Chad here from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at the best stream settings for 480p for Streamlabs OBS. Let's go ahead and jump into this. All right, so before we go ahead and get into this video, I wanna go ahead and preface this by saying that 480p is not the most optimal streaming setting, obviously. This is gonna be for people who really wanna stream bad and don't have access to a really good computer, really good encoder, or they just have bad internet upload speeds. So that's what this is kind of for. And if you fall into this category, hopefully this video is helpful for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is click on the setting gear here, and we are going to set the video to an output scaled resolution. This is our base canvas resolution. This is what your monitor is natively. And our scaled resolution is what we want to stream with. So that's going to be 852 by 480 for 480p. We're going to keep the FPS at 30. I don't really suggest making it lower than that or else it just looks absolutely awful. And our downscale filter is going to be by cubic. If you have any problems with the frames rendering or frame drops and stuff like that, not on the upload end, but on the encoding end, you might want to change that to bilinear. But for the most part, this works for most people. The next thing we're going to want to do is the obvious thing. We're going to want to set our stream type. So what are we doing? Are we going to streaming services or custom streaming server? Most people are going to use streaming service and it's going to be Twitch, Mixer, stuff like this. But if you have custom service, you might have to select that and then input all of this. Your stream key, you can get it from your dashboard if you're streaming on Twitch. Mixer, I believe, is similar. There's some kind of settings panel you can go to and find your stream key and you will paste it in here. and that's how you get up and running. I'm not going to pull mine up because I don't want to have to blur out my stream key and it does change from time to time and I'm not going to show it for every single platform. All right, so moving over to output, we've got two different options for output mode. We have simple and advanced. Advanced gives you a ton more settings. We are not going to be messing with that today because we don't need all these advanced recording, audio, replay buffer and stuff. We just want it simple. So we will just go ahead and minimize recording because we're not going to be utilizing that and replay buffer. We're not going to be utilizing that as well because I don't know if you guys are going to be streaming at 480p because of it's a limitation of your computer or the bandwidth. So for example, how do you find out what your video bitrate needs to be? Well, we're going to want to push that the best it can be for your internet. So what you would need to do is go to a browser. Don't ding me for using edge i'm using it because i'm running a virtual machine and i did not feel like downloading google chrome and what you're going to want to do is go to a speed test site my favorite is speedtest.googlefiber.net and go ahead and run the speed test and it will show you what your upload and your download is so currently my download is in the 30s and my upload is actually really 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 high for some reason and i have no idea but i'm actually enjoying it being that high um so with that being said, this is what my upload speed is. So it's 10.9 and this is a very helpful number. So let's go ahead and translate 10.9 or we'll just say we'll round it down to 10 instead of rounding up. What does that look like in the form of a video bit rate? So if our upload is 10 and we're just going to say 10 instead of 11, our upload would actually be 10,000 bit rate. So essentially you take what your upload is and then you add three zeros onto it if in the form of megabytes per second. And let's say this was something a lot lower. So say you were only getting three up and you wanted to make sure you had at least half a meg uh, for voice chat and for games and stuff like that. So we would want to change this bit rate. So say once again, let's say this is a, uh, a three and what we would do here is we'd probably put it somewhere near a 2500. So we would do 2500, which would essentially be a 2.5 meg. And that way we've got a 0.5 meg left over for video games and stuff like that. Now, this is actually a fairly high bit rate for 480p and you can, depending on your upload speed, even trail down to, I would say the lowest I would go would probably be 1200. And I really don't suggest this much, but if your internet speed is say only 200 or two meg, I mean, then you might be fine with doing 1200 uh, bit rate. So this would be a good example of once again, if your upload was say two meg, maybe try 1200 and see how that works for you. So 
Once again, this is a definitely a variable situation. This can change depending on your internet and on your computer. You'll just have to see what works for you. So let's say my internet was a three meg. We're gonna go with 2,500 and we're gonna leave it there. And the audio stuff in the encoder, this is something we'll talk about too. The audio bit rate's 160. I never change that and I'm not a real stickler for audio. I always feel like my audio is at least decent. It's not bad. So the encoder is something that can change from system to system. The X.264 software essentially means your processor on your computer is gonna be doing the encoding. So some people might not know what that is. And let me, let me say it this way. If you've got a good graphics card, you can use a software setting um, if you wanted to, but there's also another setting called NVENC, which is otherwise known as NVIDIA NVSync. And what it gives you access to is use your graphics card to encode your stream. So if you had a pretty decent graphics card that's NVIDIA brand, you can use that. And there are two options. There's an older option and a new option. Use the new option, the video looks a little bit better and it takes that processing power off your processor. So that's pretty awesome. And once again, if you have options to NVE and sync, um, use it. And if you have problems with it, try changing it back to the software. But I suggest keeping it on e NVE and C sync, which is pretty much the best. Now that is most of our video settings, but there are a few things that you'd want to do as well. You'd want to go here into audio and I don't typically mess with the sample rate. I leave that at 44.1 uh, kilohertz, I guess is what that is. And I leave it at stereo. You could downsample that to mono if you wanted to, but here's the places that this is really going to matter. We get to select which devices come through our stream here, because this is not only just a setup video for 480p, but we also have to have audio to go with that. So we would select desktop audio device. This would be like if you had speakers on your computer, you could leave it to the default or your speakers. And then your mic, you would set as your microphone. So if you had like a blue snowball, it would show up here, you would select that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the settings for the audio. The last thing you may want to mess with is the advanced tab. And I know that's kind of weird because we specifically have strayed away from using advanced settings, but there is one thing in this whole thing that we might actually want to use. So we're actually not going to use any of these things down through here. The one thing that we would possibly use is the process priority. So if you have a problem with your game taking priority over your stream and it causes issues for your frames to drop and everything like that, you can actually change your priority level from normal to above normal and possibly even high. The lower you put this is if you're computer maxes out that the processing power or RAM, it might actually tell this, hey, this isn't as big of a priority and you might start dropping frames. So what I would do is I would probably put this at above normal and just leave it there. So, all right, guys, that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let us know in the comment section down below if this video helped you out, if you had bad internet or if you had a bad or older computer or something like that. Let us know what's what's the reason you're needing 480p stream settings. And that's going to be all for this video. This has been Chad from How To Tech, the channel dedicated to helping you take your tech to the next level. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.